anyone they got their hands on, they would have killed, including Nancy Pelosi. William Calhoun, a lawyer from Georgia, also participated in the insurrection that day, and he too has been charged for his actions. This insurrectionist detailed his criminal activity at the Capitol online. Calhoun wrote about his involvement on his own Facebook page. Here's the post. Calhoun stated, quote, and get this, the first of us who got upstairs kicked in Nancy Pelosi's office door and pushed down the halls towards her inner sanctum. The mob howling with rage. Crazy Nancy probably would have been torn into little pieces, but she was nowhere to be seen. Crazy Nancy. That's Trump's nickname for the Speaker of the House. Then he explains that he and his group only abandoned their claim to the Speaker's office when, quote, a SWAT team showed up. He writes, quote, then a SWAT team showed and we retreated back to the rotunda and continued our hostile takeover of the Capitol building. Retreated, hostile takeover. He's using military terms for this attack. The mob continued to look for Speaker Pelosi throughout the time they occupied the Capitol, including invading her offices. Watch now how the mob searches for Speaker Pelosi's office, which is marked in red, and the House chamber itself. During the siege, the Speaker's staff took cover in her office, hiding in fear for their lives for hours as rioters broke in and ransacked her office. As the rioters were breaking into the Capitol, her staff retreated into an interior room. Eight of them gathered in a conference room. About the same time Capitol Police announced that Capitol had been breached, Speaker Pelosi's staff heeded the call to shelter in place. On our model, you can see the riders in the rotunda in red and the speaker's office again in orange. So this is a security video, so there is no sound. As you can see here, the staff moves from their offices through the halls and then enters a door on the right-hand side. That's the outer door of a conference room, which also has an inner door that they barricaded with furniture. The staff then hid under a conference room table in that inner room. This is the last staffer going in and then barricading themselves inside of the inner office. After just seven minutes of them barricading themselves and the last staffer entering the door on the right, a group of rioters entered the hallway outside. And once inside, the rioters have free reign in the Speaker of the House's offices. In this security video, pay attention to the door that we saw those staffers leading into and going into. One of the riders you can see is throwing his body against the door three times until he breaks open that outer door. Luckily, when faced with the inner door, he moves on. Another rider later tried, unsuccessfully, to break through that inner door. At this point, the mob had already broken into the speaker's formal conference room that is in the back of the hall at the top of the video. I want to play some audio we have of the speaker's staff with the riders at the door that day. You can hear the terror in their voice as they describe what's happening to them as they are barricaded in that conference room. Please listen carefully because the staffer is whispering into a phone 
as he hides from the rioters that are outside the door. You can hear the pounding in the background as that staffer is speaking. One of those staffers explained later that they could hear the mob going through her offices, breaking down the door and yelling, where are you, Nancy? The mob also pillaged and vandalized the speaker's office and documented their crimes on social media. They stole objects desecrated the office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States. As you can see in these photos, rioters broke down a door. They also shattered a mirror. At 2.50 p.m., several rioters, including Richard Bigo Barnett, entered Speaker Pelosi's office. The world is all, all now too familiar with the images from these slides. If you look closely, however, at the now infamous pictures of Barnett with his feet on the desk, you might see something that you didn't notice previously. Here's a better look. As this photo highlights, he's carrying a stun gun tucked into his waistband. The FBI identified the device as a 950,000 volt stun gun walking stick. The weapon could have caused serious pain and incapacitated anyone Barnett had used it against. Richard Barnett bragged about his actions. He was proud of the way he desecrated the Speaker of the House's office. He left a note. We will not back down. Here's Barnett in his own words. How'd you get it? I didn't steal it. I bled on it because they were fucking macing me and I couldn't fucking see. And so I figured, well, I'm in her office. I got blood in her office. I put a quarter on her desk, even though she ain't fucking worth it. And I left her a note on her desk that says, Nancy Big O is here, you bitch. Trump's mob ransacked the Speaker of the House's office. They terrorized her staff. Again, that is a mob that was sent by the President of the United States to stop the certification of an election. The Vice President, the Speaker of the House, the first and second in line to the presidency, were performing their constitutional duties presiding over the election certification, and they were put in danger because President Trump put his own desires, his own need for power over his duty to the Constitution and our democratic process. President Trump put a target on their backs, and his mob broke into the Capitol to hunt them down. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.